religion. Richard Smallwood has a healing song that says, don't be discouraged. Joy comes in the morning. Know that God is nigh. Stand still and look up. God is going to show up. He is standing by. There's healing for your sorrow, healing for your pain, healing for your spirit. There's shelter from the rain. Lord, send the healing for this. We know there is a balm in Gilead to heal the soul. Giving honor to God the Father, his precious Holy Spirit, and Jesus his Son. That's the Godhead three in one. Secondly, to Pastor Brown, Mrs. Brown, Elder Collins in his absence, and to all the officers and members of this great church, my church. It is indeed an honor and a privilege to stand behind this sacred desk as we celebrate Women's History Month. Theme, providing healing, promoting hope. This message is dedicated to women who need healing and to the countless women on the front lines. But not just in healthcare, women on the front lines in the community. As teachers, social workers, police officers, and preachers. Let us pray. Father God, in the name of Jesus, I ask now that the words of my mouth, the meditation of my heart, be acceptable in thy sight, O oh God. I thank you that the word falls on good ground, O oh God. We thank you for the harvest that shall come forth. We thank you and we give you glory, honor, and praise. Now, Satan, we serve you notice. Uh, we rebuke any hindrances, distractions, or anything that would try to prevent this word from going forward. We thank you now in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Working in a healing profession, I'm wise enough to know that I cannot heal anyone. Only God can do that. I'm here today as a conduit, a messenger. The title for today is, I Need a Healing. I Need a Healing. If you have been pickpocketed by your past, robbed of relationships, mugged by the mirror, or sold for success in this old world, this message is for you. Our scripture today is a familiar passage. In the New Testament, we find the four gospel writers. The first three, Matthew, Mark, and Luke, wrote about a hemorrhaging woman who needed a healing. I'm going to reference Luke, the physician for this occasion. Luke, that's chapter 8, verse 8. 43 to 48. And if you would please stand for the reading of God's holy word. That's Luke chapter 8 and verse 43. I will be reading out of the King James Version of the Bible. Luke chapter 8, verses 43 through 48, and verse 43, and it reads, And a woman having an issue of blood twelve years, which had spent all her living upon physicians, neither could be healed of any, came behind him and touched the border of his garment, and immediately her issue of blood Stanched. And Jesus said, who touched me? When all denied, Peter and they that were with him said, Master, the multitude thronged thee and pressed thee. 
and sayest thou, who touched me? And Jesus said, somebody had touched me, for I perceive that virtue is gone out of me. And when the woman saw that she was not hid, she came trembling and falling down before him and declared unto him before all the people for what cause she had touched him and how she was healed immediately. And he said unto her, Daughter, be of good comfort. Thy faith hath made thee whole. Go in peace. God has many names. You, you may be seated. God has many names. People need him to be a lawyer. Some days he's a mother to the motherless. Some days he is Jehovah Jireh, my provider. Jehovah Tiskinu, my righteousness. Jehovah Shalom, the God of peace. And our focus for today, Jehovah Rophi, my healer. The Hebrew word Rophi refers to a physical healing. But God, 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 he always does the exceedingly, abundantly, above all we can ask, think, or even imagine. He also heals the mind and the soul. To be healed means to cure, to restore, or to make whole. Now, judgmental people, they often assume that when someone needs a healing, they did something wrong. They must have sinned, but that is not always the case. Rather, it could be the result of entering this old sinful world, having a birthday, yes, just from living in a fallen world. After returning from a trip that took Jesus across the Sea of Galilee, Jesus was surrounded by a crowd. There was always a crowd of people following him. Some, some, some were waiting to be healed, and, and some wanted to be nosy. Some wanted to hear him teach. There were also women who followed Jesus. Now, when you go to the doctor, and I'm pretty sure everybody in here has been to the doctor, information is gathered. We often ask, when did the condition, when did the pain, when, when did it start? We try to set a time frame. You see, diseases have an onset. It can be acute, which means it began days to weeks ago. The bleeding woman condition of 12 years was the opposite. It was chronic, which means it was long lasting. It was persistent. 12, 12, 12, 12 is the number of power, power and authority. Paul and Silas prayed at midnight. 12, 12, there are 12 tribes of Israel. 12 is also the number for establishing governmental foundation. Jesus had 12 disciples. Any seniors in the building graduating from the 12th grade? Jesus began his ministry at age 12. You, you, get, the, you get the point. You get the point. The background for the text is that Jesus was heading to heal, not this woman, but somebody else. Jairus' daughter, she was 12 years old, 12 years old, 12 years old. Even though Jairus was wealthy and prominent, you see, God will stop. God will delay what he is doing to come and see about you. We got two women. One, 12 years old, from a wealthy family with an acute condition, and one anonymous, poor, downcast, with a 12-year 
chronic condition. But guess what, church? They both get healed. One requested her healing in secret. You see, she was ashamed. And the other made it very public. I have a few points this morning regarding my title, I Need a Healing. Point number one, faith activates healing. Faith activates healing. Yes, this was a Jewish woman, and under the law, she could not touch her husband. Now, Pastor Brown, I don't know if you, you know, hey, 12 years, and Sister Brown couldn't touch you. She could not bear children. I don't think she mind this part, but she couldn't wash dishes, and she couldn't even sweep the floor. Unfortunately, church, this woman was untouchable. She had been banned from society. The condition even affected her spiritual life because she could not enter the temple to worship. There was a system in place back then to keep things pure, and the penalty for impurity could lead to death. Now, was she really able to touch Jesus and not touch anyone else in that crowd? But, like faith, this miracle goes against all odds. It's not in a textbook. They're not teaching this in nursing school and medical school. She risked it all. She had nothing to lose. No money, no friends. All she knew was what she heard. The Lord heals. And I need a healer. Now, why did she reach for the border of his garment? His hem. The hem of a Jewish garment was very significant. It was a covenant sign. If it was torn by someone, it was a sign for divorce. If we go back in the Old Testament, in 1 Samuel chapter 15, Saul ripped a tassel from Samuel's garment. To grasp the hem is a sign of loyalty and submission. It was a decorative feature that made a statement about the status and importance of a person wearing it. Jesus was wearing such a priestly garment. The tassels reminded Israel that their help came from above and of their duty to keep the law. When she reached out in faith, she touched the tassel or fringe. And at this point, I need a model. I need a model. I'm going to borrow one of my sisters. Can you stand right there for me, please, sweetheart? Thank you, thank you. Why did she touch the hem of his garment? Now, look down at your pants, look down at your skirt, whatever garment you have on today. Not that kind, not that kind, not that kind of hem. That's, that's not what she touched. When she touched the hem of Jesus' garment, she touched the tassel or a fringe, okay? And it probably was the color blue. The tassel at the bottom of Jesus' garment was blue because the color of royalty for the Jews was blue. 
we are familiar with the Gentiles color of royalty, which is purple. Church, I encourage you today to make tassels on your garments. When other people see you, when they touch you, when they get to know you, they too will be whole. I haven't forgotten about you standing there, sweetheart. Touching Jesus' blue tassels, she was touching covenant. It was the closest thing to touching heaven. Many had touched Jesus in the natural, but he didn't acknowledge them. He felt a touch in the spirit, one that he didn't see. You see, it was the spirit of faith. You want to touch the heart of God? Pray with faith. Jesus responds to faith. Thank you, sweetheart. Activate our faith. Point number two. Point number one was faith activates healing. Point number two, stop the bleeding. Where, 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 oh, where is it bleeding? Where is all this blood coming from? You might be spiritually bleeding if you stop becoming biblically literate. That means you have stopped reading your Bible, stop sharing the gospel, stop trusting God, and stop daily prayer. You're bleeding. You're bleeding. You're bleeding. In 2 Chronicles chapter 7, verse 14, God has a prescription for spiritual bleeding. If my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face, turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven and forgive their sin and will heal the land. You see, God intends to bring us into communion with him. And communion gives birth to repentance, true repentance. You see, it is a renewing of the mind, a change in mindset that allows us to turn from our wicked ways. This world, this world, the one that we were born in needs a healing. But America can't get the physical healing without the spiritual healing. The spiritual bleeding needs to stop. America is filled with hate and racism. Blood is on her fabric. Our black national anthem says, we have come, treading our path through the blood of the slaughter. Slavery occurred as a result of oppressors wanting free labor. And slavery is still going on today. If you are a slave to sin, then Satan is your master. True healing, true healing occurs by addressing the source, which is why I love holistic medicine. It gets at the root of why you are having symptoms. It takes into account your environment, genetics, and lifestyle. What we are seeing today, hate, gruesome crimes, and mental health crisis, those are symptoms symptoms. America's bleeding will stop when she acknowledges and treats the root cause. You see, I, 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 I need a healing. And I'm going to come a little closer to home. The church, it is also bleeding. You see, there is so much church hurt. People in the four walls, black churches, white churches, Little churches, big churches. Hurting people hurt people. But just like hurting people hurt people, healed people heal people. The church, the church, the church is supposed to be a healing place. A place for sinners, a hospital for sinners, and not a museum or a social club for saints. 
in order to stop the bleeding, we have to apply some pressure, apply some pressure, pressure. Healthy leaders in ministry, they have nothing to prove. They have nothing to lose or no one to use. Let's heal the organ that pumps blood through the body, the heart, clean the heart. Yes, let's clean our hearts and the bleeding will stop. You see, there's no need for a heart transplant when you have a heart filled with God, a heart filled with patience, with love, with joy, with peace, with compassion. The Bible says a merry heart doeth good like a medicine. My final point, point number three. Point number one was faith activates healing. Point number two, stop the bleeding. Point number three, get down and reach. The woman did not let her issue stop her. She just reached out. Self-image went out the door. Pride went out the window. When you need a healing, when you need a healing, don't try and protect your self-image. That usually results in more issues. If you need help, acknowledge that you need help. It's the only way to be truly whole. But in order for her to reach, in order for her to reach, she had to go. She had to go down. And when you're down, when you're down here, many times people can't see you. But that's okay if nobody can see you because God sees you. God sees you down here. And down here, I say, my, my God, my Father, oh, it's your servant calling once again. God, I, I need you. God, if you would help me. God, if you would restore to me the joy of my salvation. Oh, if you would only get down, get down, get down, get down. You can reach, 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 reach. You, you see, God didn't see it with his natural eyes. He saw it, he saw it in the spirit. You got to stop trying to see how your healing going to manifest in the natural. Just believe God. See it in the spirit. I surmise, I surmise that when she went low and humbled herself, the master, he went high. She stretched herself and reached out. She reached out for her healing. And so today, I encourage you to reach out for your healing. Declare that you are healed from diabetes. You are healed from high blood pressure. Lord, I am healed from lupus, oh God. I am healed from tumors. I am healed from cancer, oh God. I am healed from the opinions of men, oh God. I thank you that I walk by faith and not by sight. Oh, great and mighty things that you promised me, God. I shall live a long and satisfied life. You have to reach, 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 and grab your healing. In closing, in closing, in closing, we all have a story. If God has healed you, you ought to testify. You see, God allowed this woman to overcome her fears and testify. A private request became public. This nobody became an encouragement to somebody, Jairus. He wanted others to know that through faith, she was made whole. Jesus not only saved this woman, but he saved her soul. She went from being called woman to being called daughter. Now she is in relationship. I can say woman, stand up. And a whole lot of people might stand up. But when I say mama, stand up, only one person in this building is going to stand. I can say man, stand up. And a whole lot of men might be wondering, hmm, is
Is she talking to me? No, but when I said, Daddy, stand up, I'm talking to one person. You see, that's called relationship. Do you have a relationship with the healer? I need a healing. There is oxygen in the blood called blood oxygen. Maybe you're not bleeding, but you need supplemental oxygen. COVID has caused us to become very familiar with the word ventilator. My dad was on the vent, but that machine could do nothing in itself. If so, everyone that went on the vent would have came off breathing. My grandfather prayed a prayer, Lord, you breathe into Raymond's lungs. You see, we prayed in faith. There comes a time when no matter how many doctors you know, how many nurses you know, if your doctor ain't Jesus, your healing will not manifest. Breathing. It is a blessing. Breathing, it is a blessing. Jesus is the breath of life. The ventilator was not guaranteed to work. But as I come to a close, I've got a guarantee. A doctor named Jesus, Jehovah Rophi. He won't send you a bill. No, no, you won't get that surprise bill in three weeks. The price has already been paid. He paid it all. He paid it all. You see, when Jesus breathes into man, he lives. And when he stops breathing into man, he dies. But to die in Christ, oh, there is hope. That's where hope comes in because you will live again. Physical healing, it is good, but you see, it's temporary. It's just a remedy for mortal bodies, not for your soul. Physical healing, you see, it is a great blessing that can come as a result of prayer. People often pray the prayer of agreement. They like to be anointed with all. All that's good, all that's good, that can bring healing. But you see, church, you see, speaking the word, that too can bring healing. Laying on the hands, that can bring healing. But if you don't remember anything I've said today, if you don't remember that faith activates healing, if you don't remember how to stop the bleeding, if you don't remember how to get down in reach, just stand on his word, stand on his promise. You see, God sent forth his word and his word healed thee. And as I go to my seat, women, oh, I'm so glad that we are not in this alone. You see, there was a man that also had an issue of blood. Yeah, yeah, his bleeding didn't stop either. One Friday evening on a hill called Calvary, the Bible says it was, it was, it was the noon hour. It was the 12th hour. Sounds like power sounds like authority he could have called 12 legions of angels to come down but you see that healing that healing would have compromised my salvation and your salvation i'm so glad that healing didn't manifest i'm so glad that he was wounded that they put nails in his hands he allowed them to put thorns on his head and blood came streaming down, streaming down. He took his last breath. There is power in his name. And 2,000 years later, people are still being healed. The prophet Isaiah said he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of his peace was upon them and by his stripes i am healed i am healed make it personal i am healed hallelujah Come on, all I can do is say hallelujah. 
Glory to God. Hallelujah. Anybody in here need a healing? Come on, anybody need a healing? Come on, we got to activate our faith. We got to stop the bleeding. And sometimes we got to get down to reach up. Come on, I need a healing. I need a healing of my body. I need a healing of my soul. How many of y'all know God can and God will? He'll heal us. Hallelujah. I'm going to tell y'all, I'm going I'm to I'm I'm just say, I'm going to say, I'm going to say this. Um, praise the Lord. <laughs> My God, uh, 